each credits. Can they hear us right now? Well, good morning, Austin. Uh, this is Atheist Community of Austin, and we're bringing you the Atheist Experience. Uh, we're running a little te technical difficulties. We usually have credits come rolling up the screen there about this time. It, uh, sorry, <laughs> yes. And uh, this is live. There we go. Let's go ahead and show the credits there, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bear with us, folks. It, uh, uh, the <clears throat> this is live September the 6th. Uh, we will be taking your phone calls here shortly. Uh, we're doing a little different format, as you can see on our set there. We, have, we changed things a little around today. Uh, we have a special guest here, Mosh Vership. I'd like to welcome you to the show. Thanks, Ray. It, uh, <clears throat> we'll do a few uh, uh, announcements here for the Atheist Community of Austin. Uh, we meet every Sunday, at, usually at the Hot Jumble Beggary, but today we're having our lecture series, our monthly lecture series. And our guest here, Moss Vership, will be at uh, FERS at North Cross Mall. Uh, and anybody that want, wants to come out and have questions or whatever else, it's free and open to the public. Should I tell them the title? Sure can. It's The Bible's Ethics and Other Atrocities. And the subtitle is, if you still think there's something good in it, have another look. There you go. <laughs> it, uh, and that's the title of today's show also. It, uh, and they'll be flashing the number up there, which is 472-2255. Uh, uh, the other announcements, uh, we're, we have our uh, quarterly blood drive is coming up October 17th. We love all the atheists get out there and give blood. Uh, who knows, we might end up some Christians out there with some atheist blood. Oh, yeah. It might help. It could happen. <laughs> it could happen, <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, we just heard through the uh, news there that the Cenotap dedication that was going on October 4th uh, has been postponed. Uh, unfortunately, yes, uh, we're definitely looking forward to that trip up to Comfort, Texas. But uh, we will keep you up to date on that because we will be going up there soon. And uh, we, I don't have a date for that at this point in time. So uh, uh, I guess we're ready to go on to our guests. Uh, let me, for a full introduction here, we would like to... This is our first church member to be on the show. <laughs> uh, you're a member of the Unitarian Church, is that right. correct? First Unitarian Universalist Church of Austin. Of Austin, there you go. And uh, you uh, uh, are an author. Uh, you're having a book coming out soon. Uh, the title is Morals for the 11th Millennium. That's correct. Lots of luck on that, I hope. Thank you. And uh, I'm looking forward to Very reading excited. that. Very excited. Yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, we'll just go on and explain what you do with your... Uh, uh, Self-defense there is how you describe it, self-defense for... That's right, that's right. Uh, go ahead and explain it there. Well, you know, I just want to tell you why my most important sure. concern being here today and, and talking to the group of atheists later this morning, um, my, my purpose in life is to empower people to, you know, empower your viewers today. You guys have been doing a great job talking about the Bible, point, you know, telling atheists that one of, the, one of their responsibilities if they want to get into the debate, the public debate, out in the world is to get hold of those Bibles and start reading them. Yes. But you know it's really hard for us. We've been told all our life, hey, this is this got all this smart stuff in here, and then you feel really stupid. You open the book, and and you keep thinking, yeah, I must be must be something wrong with me. You know, I see that all the time. And they just put the book down and say, I can't handle this debate. And and of course, every time you're talking to someone who's who's a like a fundamentalist Christian, they do know a lot about the book, and you feel intimidated. Well, I want to empower our viewers today to say, to learn how to open a Bible and win a debate like right now without knowing anything more about the Bible than you hardly know right now. You don't need to learn a lot. You don't need to take courses. You don't need to, to you know, find out how it got written and what the history is. Just open a Bible with anybody and you can win a debate if you're really clear that it is, it is immoral stuff in that book. That, that book, there's no place you can open the book where you'll find something that says something that you'd want to support, that's something that you'd want to teach your children. Not anywhere in the Bible. And once you really get that, then you can read the words instead of the metaphors, instead of the religious symbols. And that's, that's what I want to teach people to do. That is such a, um, a wild statement there saying that there is no, because uh, we get a lot of calls from our callers there saying, uh, how do you base your morals if you don't believe in the Bible? And uh, so you brought up an excellent point here. Uh, we're getting several calls already. Hi, uh, that's wonderful. 
Uh, we want to send one through here yet? Uh, he, well, they're work, they're work, getting us a name right now, Mosh. I, it, uh, I, I was I'm impressed. <laughs> they, they, uh, they'll they'll pass us a name here shortly. Uh, but uh, just to re the Bible ethics and other atrocities. It, that's that's it. <laughs> okay, here we go, Keith. Uh, let's go with Tim here on line one. I can read that. Uh, we're getting feedback here. Oh, some feedback, Tim. Sounds like Star Wars. It sounds like you're smoking a bong there. Uh, it, uh, enjoy your bong there. It, oh, no. <laughs> it, uh, let's go on down to, uh, I, I, guess, uh, I guess I gave, my, gave myself away the fact that I knew what that was, huh? <laughs> okay, let's go on down to Anthony. Hello? Good morning, Anthony. Yes, I was wondering, okay, uh, the gentleman was, well, to your left. This is Mosh Worship. Yes, he was saying something about empowering atheists. To yes, please. To take the Bible and win a debate? Yes. But uh, what, I, what I want, and I'll, I'll sit and I'll watch through the whole program, but what I want to know is, as an atheist, as an atheist, you don't, you don't, the Bible, your life is not centered around the Bible, right? Correct. And so you don't study it, study it as extensive as, I say, a fundamentalist Christian, right? That's what, uh, that was one of his opening statements there. He, uh -huh. He's trying to that's, educate That's the us. problem. That's uh -huh. the problem. That we atheists give it away. We just say, I, I don't even want to look at it, you debate it, and mm -hmm. I, I'll just tell you that I'm not interested, and mm -hmm. then we can't win an argument. Okay, so if, if you don't study it as extensively, how would you be able to know that everything that you're putting is in its proper context? What basis, what are your, uh, uh, what, I guess, uh, what are your tests? In other words, what are you basing the Bible in terms of what source is you using to say that this is wrong and that the Bible is not true and things like that? What source are you using except your atheist views? Uh -huh. Good uh, question, good question. And we're not just using our, yeah, it's your own, if you sit down and read the statements that are in the Bible and make your own decision, we're not, uh, and I, yeah. I answered the question, but you go well, ahead. That's okay. Well, you know, Ray, the way you've been answering, I think I've been, you know, I've watched a few of your shows, and the way atheists traditionally answer the question is they get busy with talking about how it can't be true. And, you know, I don't care if the Bible is true in every word. The most important thing to me is what, is, what kind of ethics, what kind of morals does the Bible present? And if you open any page, any page, we've changed cameras, we open any page of the Bible. <laughs> uh, I'm learning to do this, this is fun. Um, you open any page and really read the words. Don't, don't tell yourself the stories, don't go back to what you've been taught in Sunday school, or don't even learn about what the scholars are saying, which are you know, closer to what I'm concerned about. Just read the words and you will find that it's not tenable. You cannot live by, you wouldn't want to live by what the Bible has to teach. So I am asking atheists to get familiar with the Bible. You say we aren't. That's right. Too many atheists aren't. Don't be afraid to open any page in the book and read it for just what the words say and don't try to go, well, I must not understand it. You're understanding it. It's as bad as it says. So just look at it. That's what I'm asking atheists to do. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? It, well, so, sort of, kind of, but the thing, the problem I have with that, that if you, you can't take one verse and, and just say, well, oh, it says that right there. See, the, as a Christian, the, the Bible, the whole Bible, you've got to take it within its context. It's true that some immoral thing was recorded. That doesn't necessarily mean God agrees with them, well, but he recorded those things. I have a okay. and, uh, so you're telling me that you're going through the Bible and just picking and choosing what you want? No. No, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, the, I don't. I don't. I don't omit the bad things that happen. But I understand that this is what I'm talking about. Is that if you take it from a pure, neutral point of view, it's not saying that that uh, this is that this is right. Like for example, like uh, King Solomon had all those uh, concubines. Okay, for example, it doesn't mean that God agreed with that. He just recorded that. He just recorded certain things, like David. Some of the things that David did w wasn't right, but it was still recorded. And so what but I'm but saying these are is Joe, Joe, may I kind of in interject? Yes. Yes. I'm not saying that there's some bad parts and some good parts. So Joe, my challenge is that you can't find me a page in the book that, that a person with healthy ethics and how they live in the world could agree with that what says on that page. I'm not picking out the bad from the good. Yes. I'm saying that if you will one day open the book, just, just flip through it, you know, take a, a Bible like I've got here, and just close your eyes and go, okay, I just found a page, I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. and start reading. Uh-huh. It, you, won't, you won't be able to live with what it yeah, says. Yeah, yes, you will. But see, but look, look what you're doing. You're doing it arbitrary. If you just open a Bible and read one verse and don't know what the whole context said, you can't, you can't read. That's not how you approach the Bible. Well, well okay. It's just like me reading your literature. If I go in and read something about your literature that Meryl Hare uh, uh, 
em embezzle money from the atheists and just take that statement alone without finding out the whole detail, then that would be un unfair to you, wouldn't it? Well, I would, I would say it doesn't work just at the verse level. You can read a whole chapter, you can read a whole book, you can read the entire mm -hmm. Bible. And you'll come up with the same mm -hmm. conclusions if you stay with it word for word mm -hmm. instead of all the things other people have said. But I think there's been a lot, a lot of people with good intentions exactly. that have said, this is my book, but they weren't really reading the book when they said it was their book. But you have to read the, co wouldn't you agree with me that you have to read the whole context of what's going on? I don't agree with you, partly because so many people take, also take the Bible out of context. You know, I when agree. somebody comes knocking on your door, they every, they we're, we're always discussing but the not Bible. Everyone. And we're always trying to say, the reason this is so bad is that the good stuff is someplace else. It's always someplace else. It's always some other translation. It's always some other reason they would have said it this way and what they meant is that way. The Bible is hurting us in our day-to-day -day lives is what I want to tell you. Exactly. And if you don't read it in every part for how it's hurting you, then yeah. other people are going to pick it up and read what the words say, and they're going to live by those words part of the time. That's and that's going to hurt all of us. Let, let me say this. When you so I'm enjoying our conversation. Thanks uh -huh. for calling. Oh, Joe's no, the next caller. Oh, I'm let sorry. Me, let me ask this so, question, right. and I, I'll, I'll get off the line. I'll let you, I know you got other callers. Cool. But when you read the newspaper, do you read one, one of his sentences in the newspaper, or do you read the whole, whole? I read the whole thing. Okay, but why? If all I can do is just open it up and just read one paragraph and get an understanding, why would I need to read the rest of it? Uh-huh. Well, that's well, not what well, I We've gone around the circle. We've made your you, point, I think. But you, but you do that so that you can get everything in its proper context, mm -hmm. right? Because okay. you don't want to read one verse. Uh, say that something somebody did something and then don't read the whole uh, context of what's actually going on because people m make statements. Mm -hmm. So to just open up the Bible and just read one verse and then judge it, judge the Bible based on one verse, which probably taken out of context. Mm -hmm. Because you remember, both, you coming from. A, a, I'm really glad uh, you uh, called. We've already gone around the circle. We both said what we got to say. I, you know, let's go on to the callers. I really, you know, I, I think it's a good conversation. Okay, you know what I had to say, I and I know what you had to say. It's great. You can't answer it. Yeah, thanks Thank for you. calling. Thanks for calling, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, whoops, hit the wrong this is great. I'm having a great time. Thank you. Yes. It, uh, this is what uh, I like to do. Talk to people who disagree, and we, you know, really get down to it. And, and it gives other people an opportunity to hear how, how the conversation goes when you really engage. And uh, he brought up the next point. I just don't read one paper. It, uh, I read more than one paper. I watch more than one news channel. Yeah. And then I get, so I have several sources. See, and they're, they're going to take the Bible as their only source. And if you take the Bible as your only source, you're going to run into problems. You have to look at other sources and other histories and everything else. Well, yeah, well, you and I have different messages just a little bit, <laughs> okay. that, which is cool, too. You okay. know. Let's go on down to Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, how's it going? That's my usual co-host, Joe. Good morning. Joe Zemecki. How oh, you? hi, Joe. <laughs> oh, great show so far. Mark is my man. Yeah, hey. <laughs> I want him in my corner, right? Uh, hey, a couple things. First of all, the October 4th uh, Cenotaph dedication, that's a drag that got postponed. Yes. We need to make sure everybody in the group knows about that. I, I made that announcement this morning, but thanks for uh, reiterating it or re reminding us. <laughs> and uh, uh, how was the concert last night? Man, it was great. The Beastie Boys. He went to be that's the reason he's not here today. <laughs> I'm glad no. you didn't come, Joe. We got, yeah, we got in real late. Uh, I really wanted to be on the show, but we got in late. And, uh, but it was a great time, and against all odds, we actually made it. So. Uh, anyway, I had uh, a couple of things. The, uh, sure. the Blood Drive, October 17, and I'm uh, going to put it again. Thanks for plugging it. I heard that earlier. Thank you. I'm the day. Uh, also, I have my I have my uh, atheist unsung hero or heroine of the week, which sure. I had actually Quickly. gotten off of for a while. And if you don't mind, I'd like to read a couple paragraphs. We got another caller, though. Oh, yeah. you do? Yeah, we have several calls, but if you do oh, Okay, I'll do it next time. Uh, oh. Next week, and I'm going to be in there Sunday. All right. Thanks. I'm going to try to make the lecture today. Fantastic. And, uh, Looking I'll forward to seeing you. All right, take care. All right. Yes, uh, Mosh will be at uh, FERS at North Cross Mall. So if you can't get through the phone today and you have questions or comments you'd like to, but uh, please don't come down and beat him up or anything else Hey, like the that. phone, the fun never stops. We can okay. keep talking. All right, we're going on down to, uh, uh, oh, don't want to do that. I'm going to Amanda? Hi. Good morning. Um, I'd like to say hello to a fellow from the Unitarian Church there. Oh. And Hi, Amanda. take issue with the idea that atheists should spend time looking into the Bible. It contradicts itself. It's uh, seriously contradictory because it's big and it has writings from many different time periods exactly. and different cultures and different individuals. It's a scattergun approach to morality. Now, I have to deal with Christians, not the Bible. I talk to my dental hygienist and I don't ask, let me see your medical manual. There's an amount of trust that we have in our fellow people. But I don't think that's effective 
objective for us. I mean, if a, if a soldier comes into my village, I'm not going to sit him down and say, let me see your manual of military protocol and your book of rifle operations. His morality is what he's doing, not what he's reading, but what he takes out of it and actually does. And I think that between the Bible and what people actually do is a big gulf. But I see a consistency in what it makes people think they have a right to do. Why should we look into the Bible to see why they're doing these things? It, uh, that's what, there you go. Go ahead. That's a good well, question. Amanda, I, re I appreciate your position. You know, you're saying, I think, that w what's important is what, how people behave, not what they're reading, which I agree with 100%. We have an unfortunate circumstance in our world, which is there is one book which affects people beha people's behavior on this planet more than any other single book. It's not an accident. It's not a historic accident. It's not because, uh, you know, it had like some kind of wisdom that carried itself through the ages. The reason we have this book today is because it's the single most effective tool in all history for successful warfare. That's why this book is so dominant in our culture today. And if we let it be, if we don't challenge the book, it continues to be that tool, that weapon in the world to continue to support domination and, and, and what I call patriarchy, hierarchy in the way we operate, dictatorship, those kinds of things, domination of men over women, domination of children. This is just like the air we breathe. And the air we, and it's the way that, it's that way because of the influence of the Bible. So that's why I think it's really important to discuss the Bible and not to pretend it's not there. Because otherwise what happens is we end up in a, in, with an assumption on the part of the people we're talking with. They assume that we also think the Bible is a good book and all it is is a difference between how we, um, how we interpret it. So we're just interpreting it differently. And that's not it. We're not interpreting, we are certainly interpreting it differently, but we really want to show that they're using a manual that they don't want to use. So, you know, it's a difference in strategy. I think you and I have the same, have the same uh, goals in the world. I'm thinking that this is what would work better, but, you know, I don't really want you to take on that work if that's not comfortable. You do it your way. That's really important. So, in a sense, this is for the people who, who really do have a sense that they could use the ability to debate right on the Bible but haven't had the, uh, the ability, maybe the courage, to overcome certain obstacles to being able to do that well. Okay. Did uh, I get this clear that you suggested that we should open a Bible at random for this? You got it. Okay. I and read the word. That's okay. as useless as opening a medical manual or a manual on how to operate a rifle at random. Well, it's can you understand what a rifle, rifle, you would be, I, I submit, I mean, you know, you're sounding pretty articulate and intelligent to me, Amanda. So I think that if you opened a rifle manual, believe it or not, you'd figure be able to understand the words that it says. You know, put this screw over here, and, and do, you know, I, I've never handled a rifle, you know, but I have a feeling that if every guy in the United States Army could do it, you could do it too. You know, read the manual and put together the rifle. But you're saying read the manual. I said read the manual, not open up the manual at random. I well, think I, I think you could open up a rifle manual at random and to listen okay. by opening it up at random is pointless. Well, uh, it really, you know, I don't know what to, I don't want to convince you except by telling you that people have done it. It's great. I mean, it works for people really well. It's the, the rifle manual uh, comparison may not really be to the point. But when a Jehovah's Witness, you know, people who've been through my class, on, which is called uh, Bible-based personal defense from fundamentalism, they come through my class. People who've said, you know, I've always hated it when people ring my doorbell and I, and, and I get, and, and it's like I'm so intimidated. Well, now they wait, they, I've got this guy who waits at his door and looks down the street and here they come and he opens the door and he says, oh, you say the Bible's a great book. He just opens the book anywhere and says, hey, God said to do this. What do you think? Should we all do this? And then, you know, now they, they don't even knock at his door anymore. They avoid <laughs> him as they come down the street because they don't want to be confronted with that information. So that's how you use it. You know, it's different from the rifle manual. So how's that? Okay, I think it's very ineffective, but okay. I, okay, cool. Thanks and for I, calling. I, mean, I appreciate you know. calling, Amanda, and I hope to see you at the lecture. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. Uh, I recognize the voice. I that. Oh, <laughs> yes. hey, all well, your friends are calling, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's go on down to Andrew. So, what the What are you doing? Okay, we, we, well, we get a few uh, idiot callers every week or whatever, that, and somehow you recognize them that fast. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you went right through there. Sound like Star Wars again to me. But uh, let me see if I get your point straight there. It, uh, uh, the Christian fundamentalists are using the Bible as their main weapon, and so we need to know uh, 
to, we need to educate ourselves on what their weapons are using. Is, is that a paraphrase of what? Yes and no, Ray. Okay. You know, I'm not even really concerned about the Christian fundamentalists. I'm concerned about liberals. I'm concerned about people who basically have the same values as, say, I might have. Maybe you have too. I don't know you well enough. Um, who who say who then open you know say that the Bible has those values, and then insist on say giving sermons in the liberal churches, let's say, or or or, or, or giving speeches and, and quoting the Bible as if somehow that's meaningful. The fact that it said something in the Bible is somehow a supportive idea. I mean, uh, it'll usually be a phrase that doesn't say anything at all, but it's like you know, seek and you shall find, you know, and then oh that's really deep, you know, um, or senators or representatives bring the Bible up in Congress. Uh, okay, what, yeah, uh, and the people, people who might even be on our side in the political arena. And what they're doing is they're damaging our cause, ultimately. If they, if the, it's those people I'm really talking to today, you okay. know, or anywhere. I want people to stop making the Bible out to sound like it's something we ought to be looking at as a reference. I want children to grow up in the world and know that there are people serious, to be taken seriously, as seriously as any, who say the Bible is bad for you as likely as that there'd be to become aware that there's people who say the Bible is okay. I want there to be theology departments teaching, teaching not, you know, teaching true um, uh, religious heritage studies where you can write a thesis that, that's, that speaks, that criticizes the Bible and says it's a bad thing, you know? You, in philosophy departments, you can, you can be an atheist today. You know, Burton Russell was thrown out of City College for being an atheist back in the 30s. I didn't know? know that. Well, yeah. now, you know, philosophy departments are full of atheists. Uh, not full of them, obviously, but you know, we're, we're represented there. But you still can't get into the theology department if what you want to say is, this is a bad book. There's no way, right? I'd like the world to change that way. I, I, so those are the kind of changes I'd like to see. So in your Unitarian Church, uh, do you use the Bible at all? See, Unitarian, you know, it's a, we're a cre the Unitarian Universalists are a creedless denomination. There isn't like a, 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 a test for what you believe. You know, you know that one. So, you know, even though like the Humanist Association, which is, a, right. you know, uh, an ally of ours, uh, was, was dominated by Unitarian Universalists. And still today, they've done, they're, uh, they're actually in the process of a, of a poll of Unitarian Universalists, and we're getting that about half, half of them call themselves humanists, you know, or, or atheists. Um, and only a small percentage call themselves Christians and, and things like that. And then there's other people who are like earth-centered theologies. Those are the kind of things that are represented. Um, but the problem is that even humanists within Unitarian Universalists, and I'm, I'm going, that's one of the places I speak a lot now, is will open a Bible and, and use it as a frame of reference. They see the, this, is the, this is the wisdom literature. And I think that's a big mistake. Because Unitarian Universalists tend to be at, at the very forefront of all the progressive issues. And it's crazy to be speaking for, you know, for, for, uh, for um, equal protection for homosexuals, equal protection for women, equal rights for everyone, um, and then pull out a Bible. I mean, that is <laughs> nuts. And, and that's, that's what I, I'm really dealing with. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be, you no. know, some say something like nuts to put people down for it. But these are my, my Unitarian Universalists are, are like my, my family, so I can talk that way about it. Okay. <laughs> Let's try another caller here. Uh, Charles? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Excellent. Cool. Good morning. Um, I had some questions. I was listening to you talk uh, specifically about the Bible here. And uh, I was wondering, um, is, is it just the Bible you guys are... are or uh, basically slam in the day, or is it is any other type of religious book, uh, say, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, or uh, say, uh, well, basically any, anything else at all? I mean, well, my own personal thing, and, uh, and I'm, not gonna, I'm not answering for the guests here or whatever, uh, I don't feel that there's any divine uh, instrument out there that comes through divine inspiration, and, uh, because I don't believe in a God or anything else like that. So it... Uh, uh, so like the Quran or Book of Dead or anything else like that, uh, I can't believe that these prophets or that came along and had said that they they talked to God and wrote this stuff down. I see. Uh, so where, where do you, uh, uh, as atheists, get what you would deem as like say higher knowledge or, or some type of knowledge that is uh, a self-improving or a perpetual self-improvement type of knowledge? Through my uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> through my own and, uh, no. Uh, uh, okay, through, through your own mind? Yes, and, and through uh, uh, other intelligent people. Uh, I consider Moss an intelligent gentleman here, it, uh, and uh, people have gone before me, but it... Uh, okay, people have gone before you. Right, like uh, Benjamin that? Franklin, Thomas Edison. Okay, now wait a minute. Ben Franklin and Thomas Edison? You're talking about basically religious people here. 
No. Ben Thomas Franklin, Edison was an ben atheist. Thomas Edison, dude, go to the go to the UT library. Brent Franklin was a Freemasonist that uh, turned to Orthodoxy before he died and was actually trying to reinvent Freemasonry, which is why nobody showed up at his at his funeral. Um, the streets of Boston that day were cleared as opposed to when Thomas Jefferson was buried. So uh, the the information, the facts are definitely there in, in support of, of what I'm saying. Um, these guys it's were a, religious people. It, uh, and Darwin w was a theologist there. He, he, you know, he was trying to be a preacher and everything else when he so, but I can still consider, uh, I can still learn something from Darwin, even though, so it, uh, the fact so that... So you're, you're getting things from people that, that are religious, but you're saying that you're getting it from your own mind. Sure. I mean, don't, don't you need to take a, take a choice at some point? Yeah, I've taken a choice. Let, let me try uh, answering sure. a question. I, you know, you've obviously got some information about uh, how people have moved back and forth in their own thinking. And you're asking us to validate one set of thinking versus another. Not necessarily. Uh, you know, in my opinion, every single person that has ever said or done anything good, and then pointed to the Bible and said, "This is why I did it," they were deluding themselves. Okay. okay so it's really Franklin. easy to handle that. But I, I want to speak about the po what we're talking about the other religions. You're just just to answer the first part of your question, because yeah. I'd like people to have the answer to that. Today, I am specifically I've come to specifically talk about the Bible. Now I know Ray in his in his you know, different discussions here on, on cable access has probably talked about other things. But for me, the Bible is the, is the main concern. It's, it's, it's the one we need to talk about. But the Bible is in a tradition, which is, one, is, is what I call the Abrahamic tradition. It's the, monos the Western monotheistic tradition, which includes Judaism, Christianity, and, and uh, Muslim world, uh, all of which come out of the same moment in history, which is really out of the, the, the creation of Christianity. I know it sounds like we're... we're I know that's a, another heresy where, where it supposedly all came from Judaism, but it really came from uh, the early 4th century when the Nicene Council met, uh, is the origin point of what we know today as the monotheistic world. Now, if, if there, was, there were two other, if, you know, even in, in, the, in the Eastern Hemisphere, there were two other major traditions, and one of them was the Hindu tradition, and, and which also really includes Buddhism uh, for the most part, and they were um, polytheistic, and you get a different set of morals. When you, you, they were patriarchic, and they had, they had tyranny as well. I'm, I'm, I don't mean to say they weren't, but they, you get a different kind of relationship among people when you're not in a monotheistic tradition. And then there was yet another tradition, which is the ancient, the old Chinese tradition, the, the pre-Maoist tradition of Confucianism and Taoism, and they were humanists. There is nothing in the, in the central literature there that speaks to a to a to a deity, and that's a tradition that again has is still they were still patriarchal and tyr tyr tyrannic. Um, there were much, you know, in my belief, there were earlier times when when humanity wasn't like that predominantly in the planet. But these are the th the big three. But you still have some things that don't go on there that do go on in the monotheistic world. Okay. So I just want to cover those bases for you. Well, dealing, I mean, uh, and since the last one that you spoke of was the Chinese, dealing primarily with them. Um, you're correct, but in the sense that their emperors were thought of as gods. So that, that's you know, our interpretation. Because we, well, we, we, we have we Westerners got to believe that way, people are thought of That's the way they presented themselves to their people, and to this day, uh, that's part of their people's tradition, orally and written. The word so deity has different meanings in different in different systems. So it's really hard for us to <coughs> well, not imagine talking, that they believed in God and God. In all in, in all instances, we're talking about a supreme being. Or no, what some we're not. Define as a supreme being. No, sure. we're really not. Because and that's to, a key to idea. Say, to say in China that the emperor was not supreme to the people he ruled over would have been ground for death. Absolutely, and to say it in, in, in Germany in Hitler's time or in 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 Russia in Stalin's time. It would have been grounds for death, but neither of them used okay, the so idea of deity. Yeah, so by, you know, by I'm not Bible, saying that everything was good in China. I'm just saying there are different kinds of problems, and some I, problems I were avoided. I see. But by attacking the Bible, you're using it as an antithesis for the attack of religion around the world. Well, so I didn't answer that. It, uh, uh, no, it, uh, like I said, we get our representatives in Senate and Congress or whatever that's, say, that's saying that the United States is based on the Bible. And it, once you start saying that, then we have to say some. We have to point out the the contradictions and the atrocities and everything else in the Bible. But we, do do you do you know what the government is based on by the symbols that they produce and, and the things that, that 
it's supposed to be a secular nation, about, and it, and it's not. Well, we're we're talking about people that um, were more or less into the belief of many gods, um, and that's something that in the government uh, end of the bureaucracy has been around for well at least since uh, the the 1800s. We're getting into a convoluted um, conversation here. Yeah. I don't know what, what, well, you're, uh, where you're going specifically to. Specifically about the Appreciate Bible. I mean, you're, you're dealing with saying that people built this country based on their beliefs of, of the Bible. No, but, I'm not saying that. Okay, well, that's what the gentleman uh, to the other side. No, and, uh, I, I'm saying that's what they're saying today. I'm not saying that's what no. happened yet. We well, get people, that's what people are saying if you today. Read, if you read what Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin wrote, you can understand why they would be saying that. I mean, okay. On the other hand, you can read what they wrote, you'd also understand why well, we're saying what we're saying. It's kind of like, you know, you're, you're pulling out what you want in that context. Well, Which I, is I'm, okay. I'm you know, to, that's what this, to you know, we're here to have a conversation, and that's cool. I'm just trying to be as specific as possible about this, this end of the Bible subject. Talking about um, Thomas Jefferson and, and Benjamin Franklin, people of that nature, um, by the references they used in their writings, you can definitely see where people would think that they were getting their beliefs but, from the Bible. Most of them were deists, right. from what I understand. Yeah, yeah. You so know, if, you I, you if I understand it correctly, they uh, they were uh, um, uh, I forgot the term. Um, but they they were. You know what they were? They were people who had of values different, of different gods. They had the important thing religion. about all of those people is they had values, and their values stood against the common value of the time. Their values were that democracy is is better than than having a monarchy. Now, the Bible didn't suggest that. And that's the important point about these people. Thank then you. we can argue about Thank whether you. or not they took it from the Bible or if they disputed the Bible, because they did both in the course of their lives. And I don't really care, because I look at the Bible and I know whether it's disputable or not. And that's the important thing. And Thank I know you. that when they said this should be a, a, people, a, a place where, where everybody takes a part in it, they didn't find that in the Bible. And I'm sure of that. All right. Okay. I, I need to go on, though. Thanks for your call. Yeah, excellent call. You take care now. Uh, let's go on down to Paula. I'm having a great time. I appreciate it. We were having <laughs> some great calls, yes. Hello. Paula? Hello. Good morning. Hi, Paula. Hi. Okay, I've heard the man in the blue shirt um, said a couple calls back about that the Bible was bad. Yes. And my question is this. You know, even if you're atheist, I don't believe anybody is truly an atheist. Um, okay. What is, what is bad about the Bible? I mean, the Bible... You know, where do you get your values from? What kind of values do you have? Because, you know, everybody, when you're born, you don't know right from wrong. So you've got to get your values from somewhere. So what is bad about the no, it, uh, How could it be a bad book? There's, there's a lot of evidence to support that morality is an evolutionary trait. It, uh, Paul, the, the reason you believe that is you've lived, grown up in a culture that is, is dominated by the Bible. Do you believe people can't grow up and, and have a sense of good, of good, right from wrong, without somebody else telling them first what it is? So I, we, you know, we have a, a basic premise difference right there. Uh, it's the Bible that causes us to have the quandary in the first place. It, and, and so what I'm asking you to do, you know, I'm asking all our viewers to do, and I'm glad you're giving me an opportunity, and you can, you know, you'll get to talk again. But I just want to say that what I'm asking you and viewers to do is open it, read the words. It doesn't support the things that you say are good in your life. Okay, are good in the world, and it does support things that you Wait, denounce. Give me an example. Give me an example. I love it. Um, I've been waiting for this, and I haven't heard okay, it. Okay, okay. You know, we'll go to That's my favorite point. one, my very favorite one, you know, in, in this kind of question is um, Numbers chapter 31. Okay, pull that one out. Moses, uh, uh, in the chapter preceding that, I'll just try to be real quick about this. Okay. In the chapter preceding that, th there's been a whole explanation, in the chapters preceding that, a whole bunch of explanation about how the Hebrews are supposed to treat the people they conquer, okay, in Canaan, when they're supposed to take over Canaan for, for God. So, um, and one of the things they're told is, kill everybody there. Just kill everybody there. Well, we get to this chapter, and lo and behold, the soldiers, the whole military attachment they sent out to kill, to conquer uh, the city, I forget which city is in, in chapter 31. The story recurs of different cities, but here's the best of them, and, and um, the worst of them. Um, uh, along come the soldiers back, and they've brought back the booty they were supposed to bring back. They brought back the gold. You can't burn gold. They brought back uh, some of the animals and things. But you know what? They did something they weren't supposed to do. They brought back the women and the children. You know, they killed all the men, just like God said, kill all the men. They did. But they brought back the women and the children because 
They wanted to keep them as slaves. And guess what? Moses gets really mad. He says, no, you were supposed to kill them all. And, and, and he's really angry. So he makes them all stay outside. He says, okay, here's the compromise. God didn't, you know, God didn't suggest the compromise in the story. Moses comes up with a compromise. Kill all the boy children, that's for sure. We can't have them around. You know, they might grow up and be a ha hardship to us. We'll keep the girls, but only the virgins, okay? So you've got to kill all the women who, have, who we can tell have had sex with a man before, and now you've got all these virgins, thousands and thousands of women who have never had sex, down to little girls. Those get distributed as booty throughout the, the, uh, among the soldiers, you know, the fighters, and then throughout the entire Hebrew nation. That's what the Bible teaches. Moses, the ultimate lawgiver, that's the law. Okay, I'm going to disagree with that. That is not what the Bible teaches. But open chapter 31 of Wait, Numbers. Wait a minute. You know what? Now, there are lots of stories in the Bible, okay? Some of the stories are parables. You cannot, I mean, the Bible, God is, is not telling people to go out and kill people. You Paula, can you give me, now I've given you an example. I don't know how prepared you are, Paula. Can you give me a, a parable, a story that comes out different? That, that's what I'd like to hear because I'm prepared for that. We'll talk about any story any viewer wants to bring up and say, see, really, they're good guys. I'm prepared to talk about that. Uh, no well, excuse me, sir. Okay, she got her point across. I, I want to ask you one question. What's your name? Um, that's not. That's, oh, okay. that's, that's cool. irrelevant. Keep your that's anonymity. Irrelevant. That's all right. If you, if, you, if you don't believe in God, what do you want to know my name for? That's irrelevant. Okay. Nevertheless. No, you, you really Christian? exist. No kidding. Uh, I'm sure of it. You studied the Bible. Yes, you bet I did. Okay, you did? All my life. Uh, he well, still is studying. He's still studying it. Yeah. Huh? He's still, still studying, studying it. Uh, okay, I asked you and asked your friend, but but nevertheless, uh, are you a preacher? No. no. <laughs> oh, no, I wouldn't choose that profession. Well, you said, you was quoting all this God this and God that. like Bible you, this, Bible like you that. you believed it happened, but some of the things are not true about it. What's what do you mean? Truth? I'm telling you what the Bible says. I mean, if, if you ask me about Moby Dick, I'd tell you what Moby Dick... I haven't read Moby Dick. Well, okay. you know, my but favorite book... Okay. You know, anyway, the point is this right here. Okay. The point is this. Those are stories, and there's parables in the Bible. So okay. Tell me a parable that's cool. Give me one. A Read parable? it out of the Bible to me. Don't tell me what it is. Okay, the, the story about the, uh, the talents. Talents? The, the ten talents. The, the ten talents. Yeah. Tell that's, me what that that's is. That's a parable. I don't know that one. What, do you, what ten talents? That's in the New Testament. Okay, fine. Okay, and which that is another point I want to bring up. You're bringing up things. Jesus came. Jesus is the Savior. He came, and there's some things that were going on in the, in the Old Testament that Jesus said, "Okay, look, we're not doing this anymore." Okay. Uh, Paul, it's very. Cool. I'm trying. I, I really appreciate you bringing that up because the New Testament is another myth we've got in this culture. You know, the New Testament came along; it's a lot better. So I suggest you Revelation. You know, look at Revelation, say chapter. Uh, let's see, my favorite ones, chapter 8 and 9. Look at Revelation. Look at what God does, or Jesus does. You know, it depends on how you read it. Look what Jesus and God do and have their minions do to the people who simply chose to not be believers. Because that's all Revelation discusses. Is there were the people who were the believers and followed God, you know, followed God the, the Godfather, the, 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 um, the protection racket. Revelation, they went in, and then other people did didn't. Occur. And look what God says. The, he sends his angels to do to people. He tortures them. Every wait, wait, possible wait, wait. kind of torture. Is it, you know, Hitler didn't figure it out. He had to read Revelation, but he knew how not, to do it. Revelation has not occurred. Revelation is something that's going to well, happen. Great. So that's even worse. Listen to, your, listen to this, Paul. I, I, I really don't mean to be yelling. And, I, and this is a, I'm glad you called. This is a good uh -huh. conversation. But it's good for our viewers to hear this conversation. Because Revelation is what God is promising. No wonder people are afraid to challenge the Bible because they've been being told that if they so much as say, bad book, then God is going to do those things to them no matter how good a person they are. So, you know, I'm asking if that's okay. Is that okay with you, Paula, that no matter how good a person I am, if the one sin I've got is to say that that's a bad book, that I'm going to get my heart tor torn out, and thrown in the fires, and, and that's only the beginning. Do you think that's cool, Paul? Can I say something? There's sure. no place in the Bible that says if you say that the Bible is a bad book, you know, you are going to be tortured. I'm sorry. Okay, you know, I'll, you know, you're right. I, what if I say so God is bad? I, I that I, I like other gods, and I don't like this God. Okay, one moment. So that's just, what it is. I want to say one thing. Go ahead. I think, you know, you need to have somebody up there to, because you're saying things that are totally out of perspective. Totally okay. out of perspective. Revelation... Revelation is a book that was a, that was a vision. You didn't even say that.
So there, there could be people out there that, that don't even know about the Bible, and then you're given the wrong idea. It's a, it's a vision that, the, that, that preachers use all the time to say, this is what's going to happen to right. you if you don't follow what I'm telling you to do. I mean, do you disagree with that, Paula? Don't preachers do that all and the time? I, I have a question for Paula there. And, uh, uh, you, you brought up the fact that the New Testament and the Old Testament, so you're automatically saying there are parts in the Old Testament that you are not going to agree with. No, 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 I'm not saying, you know, first of all, let me just say this right That's here. what I just Wait heard. Wait a minute. Take the your Bible, time, Paula. The Bible is just a blueprint for life, okay? I don't think you're going to find anybody, I mean, you know, there's different people that wrote the Bible. So we're not going to say that every little single thing in the Bible is true. A man wrote the Bible. The Bible does not just appear one day, you know, uh, in the desert. Exactly. Thank okay? you for supporting that idea that, a, that a people wrote the Bible. That's, That's right. True. You know, people who are inspired through God. Ah, <laughs> okay. Okay, and of course the Bible... So why does God inspire some people r correctly and other people, all, you know, all wrong, all in the Excellent same book? Question. I mean, I don't know. What's, what's your answer to that? Well, you know, there people have different levels of faith. You know, there are different uh, levels of faith. And a person, you know, is going to live different. I mean, a preacher's not going to do the same thing we would hope. You know, of course, everybody's human, so people do do wrong things. But some yeah. of the people who wrote the Bible didn't write it just right, is what you're saying. Well, not necessarily even that, but I think through different translations, I mean, you know all this if you study the Bible. Sorry? How, you know yeah, all this we know if you the study history. the Bible. We've studied How the history of the Bible. the Bible's been translated. Right. Uh -huh. you know? Well, I, I would tell you, Paula, I mean, what I tell people in my classes is there's this myth going around that the current translation you're reading is the, is the reason it's wrong, you know? And I want you to know that every time, every translation that's ever been written has always softened the rough, the bad stuff in the Bible. I can give you an example of that if you want, but I don't even know if you need to pursue it. But the truth is that if you, the further, and I, I read Hebrew, by the way, so, you know, so I can tell you about the Old Testament, and I got to tell you, I haven't read the Greek yet, but I've got my Latin down, and, and I know how to deal with translation. I got to tell you real clearly that in every case, the Hebrew and the Greek are worse, are more virulent, are more violent, uh, have worse morals even than the translators left in there, because the translators were embarrassed about it, and they looked for ways to soften it in every translation in history. Well, excuse me, sir, I'm back again. <laughs> okay. Okay. Welcome yeah. back. Right. Um, now, as far as you reading the Bible, uh, I'm glad you're doing that. Maybe maybe you will turn around before you get through. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> no, in your head, in your head, you know. That's all right. Okay, now, you, you know, you want to try to be comical and all that. I got a question for you. Sure. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Oops. What is the point of the question? Well, I, make the, your the point. point of the question is the same as the Bible. You're going to worry about uh, every little parable in the Bible. You're okay. going to worry about then, And the point is that, that, that the, the Bible... Other. Are you going to try to overtalk me? Are you going to let me talk? Uh, sure, go ahead. You're, you're quite right. Please respect me. Go right ahead. Uh, okay. That's the point. Okay, can I answer it? Yeah. Okay. The Bible... Not what the came Bible, first was people. No, I've got to tell you who came Bible. first, the Bible or what. You know, people came first. And then some people had an, uh, found the need to create a tool to oppress other people, and they wrote the Bible with that intention. Exactly. They, they wrote, the Bible was written for a specific purpose at every point of its, of its uh, not so much as its writing, so much as its compilation. The purpose of the Council of Nicaea was to support a, a, the, 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 the emperor, Constantine. That was the entire purpose of the compilation of the Bible. And then they could go out and kill everybody who spoke against Constantine the emperor. That's what the Bible gave them the, the, the overlay moral right to do. So that's the chicken that came first or the egg that came first. Okay, uh, Keller? Yes. Uh, I'm really sorry. Uh, we're running. Uh, we oh, got this a bunch is a of great talk. I'm really glad you called. We got a bunch of people online thank there, you. and I do appreciate okay, your call. Thank you. All right, you have a good day now. And uh, you are welcome to come down to the, uh, to the meeting there and meet him in person here. That's uh, going we can down to. We're talking down there. This would be great. I'll, I'll, I'll stay late. So look at this. Uh, First half here, we can keep buying food and eating and talking. Okay, let's go on down to RC. Hello? Hello. Yes, RC. What's up? Yeah, uh, I would be interested to know, uh, understand one of you is a Unitarian, is that correct? Mod uh, Unitarian Universalist. It's a combined religion now from two, two older denominations. Okay. Do you do, uh, like, funerals and. Um, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, we do all the same, yeah, I don't want to say what, all the things. What, do what, things. what exactly, after a person dies in your faith, uh, do you uh, talk about an afterlife at the funeral or not? No, we talk about the life that was. Generally, Unitarian Universalist uh, 
you know, memorial services, we celebrate the person's life. That's, it is a different kind of service. People come and talk about all the great things about this person's life and what they contributed to us by having been here and, and, and what kind of example they gave us, and, and we just celebrate. That's what we do at memorial services. So you pretty much conclude that it's all over at that point. In other words, that's no, not for us. See, they live on with us in our minds and our hearts. That's why it's not over. And, and, and so it's never over. But that and, and, and you know what? Their physical body contributes to the earth and continues the cycle of the, of the natural cycle. I mean, it's never over. But as far as their personality going on into a, a next world, you oh, don't yeah. really believe that. Well, hardly. I, you know, I don't want to speak for all Unitarian Universalists. I wouldn't even want to speak for all atheists. But, you know, mostly they, that most Unitarian Universalists would agree with what you just said, that we don't think there's, a, there's something uh, an, uh, that the personality continues I, to exist. I think he's talking about a soul. Uh, I guess so, but you, you were trying to be, you know, trying to stick with are you, are, you, are you asking about a soul? No, yeah. I'm just, uh, uh, yeah. I, I'm not really interested in what either of you believe about the soul, because I think I know what you believe. Okay. But uh, w what you're concluding is that this growth that occurs, this phenomenal growth in your mind and your heart and love and everything just, just absolutely comes to an end at the day of death, that's basically See, what you're The effects projecting. of your life don't come to an end. So how you live your life affects the world. How what you say about the Bible affects the world after you die, for instance. So say things that are going to support the world to be a good place. Don't say things that are going to hurt your grandchildren and the generations afterward. So that's how you, that's how you live on. So that's the responsibility. Well, that doesn't seem like a very good living on to me. I mean, both of you... Sorry if I'm good enough for you. Both of you, when you... Uh, draw your last breath. It could be today or in in uh, a year, and that's that's just it for the two of you. Is that correct? That's I, hope, my, that's, I hope so. That's my point of view. Uh huh. Then I, I, you I know, that's, that's okay with me. I live life to live life, not to impress somebody else. Could I get you to define uh, love for me? Yeah, define. attention. What you what, where you put your attention is how you find out what you love. Uh huh. So so that's that's it. Real well, simple. I don't want to draw this out, but let me ask one quick question. Sure, I'm running out of time. Do either of you uh, have anyone in your life that you'd be willing to give your uh, lay your life down for? Someone that you love so I much you'd be willing to die? Me, me too. I have several, yeah. Bunchy. Would you be willing to die for an enemy? Die for an enemy. It's a funny word. You know, enemy is like the kind of thing you worry about in this kind of culture. I don't really have enemies. That's so what I mean, excellent about. point because I was going to say I, I don't think I ha I, people, I know there's people who people don't I have like me. Disagreements with I, there might be people that disagree with me, that don't like me, but I don't feel that I have enemies in this world. What's your point? W well, my point is that that probably neither one of you love enough to lay down your life for someone that you don't I, like or just care for. Why did you say that? Uh, no, I, mean, I, I am quite that's willing. That's the definition of love. That's what Jesus did. I, I am quite willing to lay my life down for in, for the United States. Austin, and my family, my life, uh, my son, and it, but it, you know, so there's people out there that I don't know that I would be glad to live my, according, lay my according life According to the Bible, Jesus laid his life down so that people could follow him to heaven, and only his followers. You know, he laid his life down so that he could ultimately be the king of the most number of people as possible, according to the myth that's written up in the Bible. That's what he said, only say. through me are you going to do it, you know? So he's not giving his life down for me because I, the first thing I, he wants for me is a loyalty oath. I'm not going to give him a loyalty oath. So he didn't lay his life down for me. I don't believe in giving a loyalty oath. And uh, I, I, I can't believe, I, you can't even prove that there was actually a person, Jesus, oh, either. There, there really wasn't, but that's okay. We're okay. talking about the Bible and the story in there. Well, I guess we're cutting him off because we're going to go on. But, you yeah. know, okay, thanks, guys. Well, thanks for calling. Yeah. It was yeah. a good talk. Thank you. Let's just stop for sure. a second. Go ahead. And you wanted to remember what time I'm, you know, I want oh, yes. to know what time I'm going to be there yes. at first. At <laughs> 11 a.m. At, er, at first. At North Cross Mall, yeah, right? They, and this uh, is a, a regular monthly meeting of the atheists. Correct. Right. Um, uh, lecture series. Lecture series. And we got a bunch of callers here, so let's try to go down here quickly to Steve. Hey, how you doing this morning? Excellent. Great. Great. Uh, too much fun. <laughs> love your show. Thank you. Uh, I have a little comment for a quick one for uh, Paula. This is in uh, the precious New Testament, First Corinthians 14, okay, thank 34. Okay, you. You're make it fast. You're going to do that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, it's... Uh, let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, oh, but they are commanded to be under obedience. Also saith the law, 
Thank and you. If they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. The New Testament. Yeah. New Testament. Does she really believe that? Yeah. That's <laughs> rough because we're not following the answer. The answer what you. She probably has some answer, you know, and so, so it's a little rough on her, I'm sure. But, but it, I appreciate your contribution. Hey, Excellent thank you contribution. Very much. Take care. Okay, let's go on down to Dwayne. Hey, how you doing? Excellent. Hey, I was calling because for one thing. I noticed that uh, for us to have so many people that claim to be Christians in this society, right? Uh, we sure do have a lot. Basically, live in a police state with cops everywhere. We lock up more people than any country in the world. That's right. Unfortunately, we put yes. people to death, and, it, and I see Christians defending this. When I read the New Testament, if you read what this Christ guy says in these three and the four Gospels, the three Synoptics and the and the Gospel of John, yeah. the guy is basically a pacifist. But Christians go around and defend fighting and bombing people all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say to you that I'm really glad that you're an ally. I agree with the philosophies you have in the world about things like that. I, I, you know, so the only, you know, our conversation would be about whether or not Christ supports our position or actually denies our position in the Bible. The guy, the guy, the man Jesus Christ is described in this book. So, so that's what we're talking about today. And, and so you're saying they're reading him wrong and they should be better, you know, being different. And I'm saying they're reading him right. So they should stop reading it. So that's our conversation today. And, and, and uh, another it. thing I noticed, sure. when the lady brings up Revelation, talking about it, it's a prediction of I the future. I brought up Revelation. Okay, when talking about that it's a prediction of the future, right? Right. If you look in the Old Testament, the only time that a devil is mentioned in the Old Testament is in Satan. Is yeah. mentioned is in the book of Job. Job yeah. Now, they'll tell you that it's in Isaiah, but the guy that is mentioned in Isaiah is Lucifer, who was an actual king of Babylon, which they turn into the angel Lucifer and say that he fell from heaven. But it's actually uh, the prophet Isaiah comparing a, a, a guy who wants to be a powerful king and rule over everybody. And he says that you will never be as high as God, that you will fall. And he is called the morning star, just as Jesus is called the morning star in the New Testament. And then on top of that, in Revelation, they're telling you about the devil falling from heaven. There's war in heaven. But if that's in the future, then that means that war in heaven hasn't occurred yet. And the devil hasn't been cast out with all his angels. Okay, well, you're answering Paula, too, which is, again, she can't answer you. What's your name? Uh, Dwayne. Dwayne, thanks for calling. The, the thing is that, see, my point is that that's the kind of convoluted discussions we get into if we even give the Bible any credence whatsoever. It's like, you're right, you know, I agree with your point of view more than I agree with hers, but why are we even giving it credence at all after we find all that in it? Why are we saying, why are we still arguing about who's interpreting the Bible correctly? Why don't we just look at it and go, oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my! <laughs> you know, an uh, 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 that that, and we just say, well, let's put this book down and let's not let's not use it that way. Let's just point out that anybody who is using it is going to get into the kind of trouble that other people do in supporting the death penalty and 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 all those things. Well, I, and I I I'm sorry you called so can late just, in the show. Can I just sure. do this? A uh, I'm, gonna have to, I'm gonna have to let you go. Thanks. You take hey, care, hey, Dwayne. Thank you. All right. I, I just want to. Uh, can we get on? Can we get uh, the camera up on here for a second? Uh, that'd be uh, maybe. number one. Okay. Yeah. I just want to give you quick rules for getting through uh, a discussion about the Bible. You know, the old Kiss rule. You know, in Clinton's campaign, the first time he ran, he remembered to use it. Keep it simple. You know, keep it simple. Stupid is part of the way it's said sometimes. So, and he then he he was he 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 said uh, he told his people when they were supporting his campaign. He said, you know, it's the it's the economy, stupid. That's the issue. Well, I you know we're talking about the Bible. It's the morality. It's the morality you always want to talk about. Forget about the, uh, the history. I mean, you just get convoluted conversations. Is it moral or is it not? Is this a book you want, you know, is this a book you want to go with? Is this a God? If, if God exists is, and, and can throw you into hell, is that, is that a good enough reason to do what God says? Or is it really your job, maybe, to oppose that kind of God, even if there's a part of you that's afraid of him and believes that such a thing exists? That's what I'm suggesting to you. So stick with the morality. It's the morality stupid. <laughs> no, that's, that's the, the joke here. It's the words. Stick with the words, not the metaphors, not the religious symbology. It's the words. Open the book, find the words. And it's everywhere. It doesn't matter where in the book you look. Open the book anywhere. So I want to tell you, some of the reasons I'm so fast on some of these you know, questions about what does love me is because my own work, what I figured out to do is, is the only way we're really going to be able to get people to understand the problem with the Bible is is if we give an alternative, you know, what could a book have been, if somebody had written a, a book with the intentions of the Bible, in the name of a deity, and with good intentions, if we, if we kind of could get a look at that and see what that might have been like, that'll make it all the easier to look at the Bible and go, oh my, you know, and, and forget about it. So, so the book I'm writing coming out, I'm going to be unveiling it at, at um, 
Texas at the Texas Book Festival out here at the Capitol in, in November 14th and 15th. Morals for the 11th Millennium is part of a compilation called Dias Antho, those writing, Dias Antho, writings that are foot. I use a female deity for one counterpoint. to say, hey, what a deity might have said if the deity wasn't out to make you uh, their vassal, you know, to be your, your, your monarch. And uh, this is my website, www.herfoot.com. Excellent. Thanks a lot. You're very welcome. Okay, let's go on down to Bob. Good morning, Bob. Yes, how's it going? Quickly, we got hey, five Bob. minutes. Okay, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I'm an atheist myself, and uh, I've run into some problems trying to be open about that with, like, people I've known, friends, and, like, places Excellent at Excellent point. And it just seems to cause a lot of problems because people automatically think you're, like, a real bad person and they don't want to associate with you. And see if y'all had any uh, suggestions on that. Uh, first off, uh, come down and uh, meet the rest of the group here. We meet every Sunday at Hot Jumble Beggary. Make some friends. And uh, this week, uh, we're doing our lecture series with Moss here at uh, FERS at North Cross Mall. In an it, hour. In an hour, correct. And uh, uh, you just got, you, you, you can't be afraid. You can't let the Christians uh, scare you into not admitting, because it happens to me, especially now I've been on the show, the host on the show, I get it all the time, you know, I, I meet someone new, they'll, they'll say they're a Lutheran or they go, they go to this church, and what church do you go to? It's like, I'm an atheist. And I, you know, there's times in my life where I've been afraid to say that. Well, uh, I'm no longer afraid to say that, and, and it's because of all the Christians out there that are so down. Uh, I, I don't know if that answers your right. question or right. not. Let me I'm just sorry. say one other sure. thing, though. I don't know you, Bob, but I do want you to take care of yourself. So if you're, you know, I mean, you want to do the right thing when, when, the, when you can get away with making a political act and standing up and saying for what you believe, speaking for what you believe. But... You know, we gotta admit the realities of our lives, which is that we are surround, we are in a hostile environment. So, take, you know, I want you to just take care of your well-being first. You don't have to tell the truth about what you believe. You don't owe that to anybody. So, you know, Good take, point. use it when you can change the world with it. But when all you can do is lose your job, so you, can, you know, or something like that, then keep it to yourself. Say whatever you gotta say. Yeah, that's kind of what it comes down to sometimes. Is yeah. Well, uh, love to meet you in person. Come, Come on, on down. down. Yeah. Can, I, can I just say something just real quick? Uh, sure. I just want to say that, you know, I'm glad that y'all are out there saying these things because a lot of things about Christianity and things like that are just, I think, are just a myth. And uh, it's a shame that everyone believes it and it, it plays such a big part in everyone's life. Worse than a myth. It's a, it's a nightmare. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, quickly down to Charles. Hey, how's it going? All right, we're down to two and a half minutes, quickly. All right, I just want to say that uh, the great God that formed all things both rewards the fool and rewards the transgressors. Okay. And, uh, We're telling us that. And see that see that a man is wise in his own conceit. There's more hope of a fool than of him. And you said that scripture wasn't written by inspiration. Well, my Bible tells me different. It says all things that were written before time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And the only way a Christian is going to have hope is through patience and comfort of the scriptures. And love, you don't have love if you don't know God, for God is love. Can I answer? Sure, go yeah, right I ahead. I just want to tell you, I want to say to you the same thing I said to Bob. I want you to take care of yourself. If that's the only way that you can get hope in your life, then, you know, read the Bible, believe what it tells you, and I want your life to be good for you, you know? So I'm not here to try to change you. I'm here for the people who have already up to, you know, looked at the Bible and gone, this isn't doing me any good. How come I feel confused about it? And I'm here to explain it to them and get them out of there, you know. It's, it's called, uh, you know, deprogramming and stuff like that. But, I, but it's not for you. So I want you to get that real clearly. I, I don't I, need to change I, I, I'm really sorry to catch you off, but uh, we're running out of time. I do appreciate your well, contribution. I hope, I hope, I, well, I uh, preacher once said, I hope you can go to heaven with me because I sure don't want to I don't want to go to your you. heaven. I really uh, don't. Don't okay. wish me that. Thanks. All right, thank you. Let's go on down to <laughs> Susan. We're down to a minute and a half, Susan. Susan? Oh, I hit the wrong button? Oh, she's on three. Sorry. Oh. Susan, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I just wanted to say that a lot of people are atheists because they've read the Bible. And also to Paula, she should read the parts of the Bible in her New Testament to talk about slavery. Excellent. That's all I want to say. Yeah. I appreciate your contribution. Thanks, Thanks Susan. All right. And, uh, hey. We're not going to take any more calls. We're down to 30 seconds here. I wanted to, Mosh, an excellent great. show. Yes, <laughs> we've had callers back Thanks up. Thanks for calling, everybody. Yes, all you callers out there. We, 
Uh, we love Austin. We love all you, everybody out there. And I think Unitarians love the people, don't you? And you love the world, don't you? <laughs> Do I have to speak for all Unitarians <laughs> again? <laughs> no. Yeah. How about you, Love Mark? is good. Do you love all the, <laughs> all, love the, all the callers? You bet I do. And I really we're heading to really Furs. I appreciate your being on the planet with me. All yeah. of you. And we are heading to Furs, North Cross Mall. We'd love to see everybody out there. This gentleman will be there in person, taking answering questions. I'm going to say more than I said here. We love you. That's it. Fantastic. And that was... You actually get up and go? Yeah. They're not watching this anymore? No. I can take my...